Sarah Albadway from Horse Racing Nation. Pleased to be joined by Michelle Yu to talk some Del Mar closing day, mandatory Rainbow Six payout. And I think everyone's biggest concern right now over there at Del Mar is the weather. What's going on from your perspective? Well, looking outside right now, it's not with some rain last night, but not since my morning. It hasn't rained. Uh, they did take the race this Friday. I haven't heard anything about Saturday yet forecast it does not look like we are going to be having on Sunday it's like eight percent chance I'm like fingers crossed that it's not going to be I mean it could be like two races affected by an audit being closing day in my opinion they should just run on the grass Right. Well, since they're not going to be running on the grass again, might as well get the most you can out of the turf course. And there's a couple turf races within the sequence, but there's also a lot of two-year-old races. In fact, half the sequence is two-year-old races. I know that you're sometimes more of a visual handicapper. Do you find it hard to finalize your picks on paper for these baby races? You kind of like to see them a little bit more? Certainly. Um, when I'm talking about babies, I want to, obviously, we have such a great because we can watch them work and I know out there we are trying to get horses that look like they're have like, like a really extensive library of at least you can lean on them for maybe one work uh, in advance also if, if I don't have any XB work support so I can see some of these horses and how for me it's physical above all else um, and then I see them physically and I'm like oh off look sometimes no matter what i'm with you there it's so much easier when you get to kind of get a feel for what these horses actually look like how they're acting on track especially in the maiden races when they haven't made a start already and that's what we're faced with for the start of this sequence so i always like to kind of base up my final ticket for any sort of multi-race sequence on what i'm actually seeing from the horses in advance but on paper Three horses are the ones that I want to use. And there's a very heavy favorite that's looming right on that also eligible list. And if this horse gets in, I feel like that's going to be where everybody kind of makes their stand to start things off. And that's doing it the hard way in post 11, currently on the AE list. But saying this horse doesn't get in, of the ones with experience, the one that I wanted to go to was the three spicy bug, seven to two on the morning line. I can't say I was really necessarily wowed by anyone that had run. So this one, at least, I felt there was a little bit of a bobble at the break, ended up finishing third on debut. And I like that in the stretch, this horse took a little bit of kickback. So getting some more racing experience and valuable lessons out of that start. Um, but I also wanted to include two of the first time starters because one of the things we have at Horse Racing Nation is our first timer power ratings. It's done pretty well so far. Um, and then the five and the six in here, five Lily Poo and the six Blessed Touch are both fours on that report, five being the best that you can be. So I wanted to include them both on my ticket. Not a ton of pedigree with either of these horses, but with the six Blessed Touch, um, she is a Gervin and those Gervin babies are running. Yeah, and Tim Yachtin actually has been in five his first and second time starters um, at this meet. He for wins belies that. But that's actually a very good, actually a very good win at, at Del Mar. So looking at babies, a lot of times I prefer the horses with with the one as my top selection in here. Louis Mendez. Mendez has been known as being around Southern California. And, you know, he ships them out of town. So they come in ready for the Shadow Diamond Stanzig. I feel like this was a really good out, um, you know, coming from behind is because then you get to come here and you're cashing in. I mean, you get the small barn bonus, which is an additional percent so um you know and then you get the chip and win bow i like the mendez horse here he's gonna get all the not as a set i've expected this horse from the rail to show so many improve from race one to race two and i think that she should be bred just fine to go the x really well here for mendez so for me that year not including her also eligible i did thought the 10 to the outside gila or gila was worth a look um ran very well first time Bye. Tried, um, tried. I'm just going to draw a line through that because not every horse likes wood by. Bye. Bye. <laughs> and of course, Flavian came in last weekend and just dominated racing out here in Southern California like he did before. He, he's going to get tabbed here. This horse has been working at Del Mar and again, a ship and win the draw here because if she shows enough speed, he's that whole run down the backside to find his path. 
um, rainy or, you know, if the track is sealed, I feel like the outside of horses charging down the outside. So uh, I'm not sure if it's one or the other, but that horse is going to be the three that I would use in my ticket. I like it. Um, do you feel like that's definitely a trend that we've noticed throughout the meet so far of kind of that outside swooping move being a little bit more uh, kinder to the closers than it normally would be at uh, most tracks? I feel like speed kind of usually dominates pretty much everywhere, but I think we've seen a lot of those races with the come from behind closers doing pretty well. I think that we just see here is a lot of fairness amount of moisture in the track just from the thing that you just see fairness and so if the horses come from behind the rail they come up the rail um we do have a couple of i felt like you've seen a lot of especially on the grass so while it seems that it's come down yes but i feel like if you watch it very it's a very fair playing track uh the things on the grass because they know all the way you see a lot more riders get bold and all of a sudden there's five paths in front of you for like three strides you're going to have clear sailing so as we don't see them in other places. Yeah. Speaking of places where we really don't see that happen, uh, New York turf racing is much different than the turf racing that we see over in California. And that's what we have in the next race in race number seven, a very snappy five furlongs on the turf. The times here, uh, obviously much different horses actually go and use their speed in the California turf races, whereas New York, everybody snatches and grabs. So it's a much different dynamic for me to handicap, but it's also kind of nice. And in here, obviously, I had to use Flavian Pratt with the number one forgiving spirit. I mean, as you said, he's just really dominated since his return to California. Um, he He's shown that he's still a very capable rider in that colony. Um, I wanted to use a couple of other horses, though, that kind of have uh, what I call like just less chances to lose. And that would be the number five and the number six in here, Essential Business and Who's Candy. Essential Business tried the turf for the first time last time out and improved that buyer speed figure quite a bit, going from a 56 to a 71 with the the surface switch gets on the turf for the second time uh, for P uh, for Peter Miller. And I just want to see what this horse can do. If this is really a horse that is relishing the change to the grass uh, with who's candy, you get the first time gelding off a layoff, obviously a little bit of a concern, but um, I just thought that this one had back class that made some sense in here. And then the number 12 atomic drop second last time out had a little bit of a trip. The short note says bumped, hemmed in upper. This horse has shown some speed and done a number of different things before. I'm curious to see how this one does and now going the five furlongs on the turf, but where did you go in here? So who's candy would have been okay. Um, ran really well on debut. You might get the key to see who this horse has been facing on debut. I can do Sumter. Sumter came back to win. He's been a multiple stakes. He's going to run at Kentucky Downs this weekend. Um, less, you know, weather and all, and all that jazz uh him and then he comes back and he breaks his maiden his next title on a good ground at santa anita and with the moisture um i just think that any horse that's shown before they can run bottling turf that we generally have is going to be a plus yeah, a big excuse he went to the sidelines after that it was already uh, um and he didn't get the lead on his own so hugglers run who's come on to be an excellent and then Moose Mitchell, who has dropped down the claiming ranks, very competitive three-year-old. I love the fact that he's first time gelding. For me, who's candy on top here? I like to for Peter Miller, but I'm just worried about say, oh, he, he's gonna he's improving. To me, love the grass. So I'm not sure if it was really a matter or it just looks that way because he only got beat a length. A lot of in and last here is a matter of three lengths. So so as long as he's in that double digits, I think, no, playing a pick six ticket, what he's going to be. But he's not like a solid lock, I feel like. Uh, and then I thought the nine, Creative Peak, was my other horse. Broke the maiden, two starts back, and then came off the bench last hell. Uh, I think the pedigree says here he should be able to shorten him up. And he's a horse that has speed. I mean, he's just like, if he handles the grass, he should be right here. It took him a long time to graduate, but he ran in between, uh, you know, his career debut. And, and then um, and even his last start, which is off of the bench, first and it was a tough group it was it's one of those um, faced older horses that day and that's a bunch um i just thought he ran super well their best meet especially for vlado who was when at santa anita but you know doesn't mean his horses can't be creative peak was a use in here nice okay well moving along to the next race, we have another maiden race, uh, this time for older fillies and mares going the six and a half furlongs in here. And 
Censorship, the number seven horse for the Bob Baffert barn, certainly looks very tough in here. Obviously entered as a maiden in the chandelier last year. You look at back at some of the horses that this one has faced, Desert Dawn, a smash ticket, obviously keeping good company as a two-year-old and now returns in here. The natural progression from two to three certainly has every right to improve. First time Lasix, he does well off a layoff. And I don't know that we're going to see four to one on this horse. I think it might end up being a, a bit of a lesser price in here. But then you also have the Princess Adelaide on the outside of that one in the number eight horse, uh, second time starter, second on debut, and certainly looks very promising. Uh, one that I wanted to use as well, maybe a third or fourth choice in here is the number one, Angel Nedashiko. I'm going to go with the pronunciation for that name. Now, was on the turf last time, gets back to the dirt. This is this horse's first time sprinting on the dirt. Um, so I like that they're returning to something that, um, returning to a surface that she's done better on and also trying a different distance with her her buyer figure of 80 to two races back going a mile on the dirt certainly makes her a player in here. I know the seconds are piling up, but at least I can rely on this one probably to use in my um, exacta trifecta somewhere underneath, if not on top. Um, and then too bossy on the outside also certainly looks like a contender and you get Flavian Pratt riding as well. So I'm going to go ahead and go as well. I love a horse with a turn back in distance. I just think it gives them so much added stamina. My only that she doesn't seem to have a lot of early gas, and I don't see, which I don't expect to see from, from Patty Gallagher, but I don't know, well, is she going to end up way far back? Um, and then she has something extra to give, and she's, so I'm using her, but with a, a little grain of salt for Karen with an eye was worthy of playing in her of Beholder. And so far, Beholder has not been good mare. Um, and if you look at the sources, Peter, about 15 lengths and didn't run anywhere. Uh, after that race, they gave right, she race April 2nd and uh, she didn't come May 27th so she got about 60 days and maybe there was a chance that she had a little shin or something little tiny break and then she's come back and Mandela worked to a five for a long work so I know during that um, it appears to me that she's fit in her six for long drills her five for long was snappy long work was 46 and change she blazed along so really well now the asterisk to that is into her debut very well you thought okay maybe she's going to be gonna happen challenging but i love the fact that men has been riding lights out here if there's someone that's going to get her late so i wanted to include her spot with that lovely pedigree being by curlin i also liked the do, 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 the agent for vladimir running second on day to improve has been working well since that race if there was another horse i would chuck in it would be the two runs i noticed leaving off censorship me in this spot i would rather spread i think there's some prices in here um and if i feel like if i use that to me she's not singleable so running with the third on debut behind princess adelaide that wanted some more ground and as you can see has actually for bob Hess, who sometimes we'll see his work lives uh for the five furlongs i mean he'll work like so the fact that this horse has put together a couple of knitting is very telling that she's got some talent in there there. And I think sometimes it's really underestimated how important it is when you have a very strong opinion about maybe this horse gets beat and you want to take a stand against somebody else at a short price. The reason that I was willing to include is because of the presence of the number five infinite empire for my racehorse. And whenever I see a my racehorse horse, I know that this horse is going to take a ton of money and make the price on mm -hmm. everybody else that much better. If that horse wasn't in here, I would have either had to have only used censorship or have taken that same stand to try to beat her. But because of Infinite Empire being in here, I feel a little more comfortable about the price on everybody else just because they love to bet their horses. I think that's a great thing and I love to see it, but it, it helps me as a better when I'm not using that horse somewhere. And for me, that was one reason not because if you look at her races, you can actually make a case for her getting blinkers on um, and the whipple with some greenness. You think, okay, today those blinkers ascend and go or focus better. She's getting to one is not realistic when you're talking about my racehorse. It's two to one. Right. Agreed completely. Well, next race in the Del Mar Juvenile Turf Stakes. Now we're going a mile on the turf. You have a lot of horses stretching out beyond a sprint distance for the first time. And one of those was one that I was really interested in, the number one odd uh, G's. Now these, uh, this trainer, Doug O'Neill, he won this race last year with McKinnon. 
He now goes from the five furlongs to a mile. I'm not super worried about the stretch out with his horses since this one doesn't seem to absolutely need to be right in that early group. And I think a lot of horses in here, they're still, you know, the two-year-olds, young babies, if they've just sprinted five furlongs on the turf, they're going to want to be a little bit more forwardly placed. And I like a horse that has shown that they don't absolutely need to be in that position. And then I also wanted to use the two horses uh, that are Euros that are coming over in here. I think that that um, move for the younger horses coming over to the U.S. for the first time. <clears throat> Usually if it's an older horse, I like to give them a start coming over here for the first time because they don't always get out of the gate as quickly. But these horses just seem like they might have been facing better company overseas. How did you see this race? It was a super challenging race. I went with the other Doug O'Neill, Hoba. And here, a son of Justify broke. I believe he was Justify's first state side winner. He did try and he ended up finishing second after hitting the front, which on this horse time, they worked him. I watched him work on the He was here, and he, he actually looked like he covered the ground. From a standpoint, he should handle both the stretch out and the surface, and J.J. Hernandez is our leading. You know what? But if this horse is going to be, be anywhere near 8-1 to one in this particular spot. So I liked him. Don't don't think, just do it for this open company. Um, but at this point, we don't have, so you've got to go where you've got to go. I love the fact that he got win under his belt, and he did it clear, which corners is not necessarily known for. And he Barrios was the board. I've already talked about him, so I made to like here. I remember when this horse debuted, I did, um, Smiling Tiger out of a Curlin Miss, please. Um, and he was, like, kind of poo-pooing me in pain room. So I think that this horse stands a really a must use in this particular spot. And playing exotics. I don't know if I'm an exotic twice. The 11 Park City, you know, they thought for Dan Blacker and he got beat by Sharp as Attack. He's come back on multiple occasions and he just ran second in a stake. Um, they thought he was going to win again. They were literally walking to the winner down um, because he got caught. But that was first time route, time routing. He has that fitness under his belt. And I like the thing. You're going to get blinkers on here. And Johnny, also another rider who's come out here with really great looking for another horse, Sarah. I'm not sure how much you want to wound up for Michael McCarthy. Uh, broke sprinting. I prefer two sprints to a route, but some timing wise. Um, but from a pedigree, Mendelssohn on a distorted humor mare, you'd say two turns. But this horse is going to be able to uh, to be able to sp speed on debut. Um, but I think the lead type. This is a very ambitious spot. Not entirely sure he's good enough, although he did cost 200. So, you know, I know they wanted him to be good, but do note, Redham Racing here for Michael McCarthy. That's some autumn. Um, Redham hasn't had maybe the best day in Andy in the Del Mar Derby. Uh, last we have another Redham Stakes winner here on the grass. With Tahoma, the only thing with him, the post position. I really wanted to use this horse. I thought about it. I was really impressed with this one early on. 13 going a mile on the turf. I just, with more horses that I liked more to the inside, I think that that might be a bit of a compromising place. Does that, do you Check. take any stock of that? Check. Drop. <laughs> He's not like a need to the lead horse. Speed. I, mm. And I think that this horse will be kind. Drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the leading rider is certainly someone that you want to be trusting to make those maneuvers for sure. Um, the Del Mar Futurity, race number 10, this was kind of my absolutely least creative opinion, and I hate that I'm doing it. But I mean, how do you get around Cave Rock, a 101 buyer on debut? Uh, there's three Bafferts in here. I like that having a meltdown does have more experience having uh two races, but I also didn't really see a progression figures wise, just an 80 to an 81. So it's not like this horse really improved so much winning the best pal, the 80 from Newgate. Obviously this horse has every right to improve second time out, but I mean, how are they going to make up 20 points as far as a speed figure on cave rock? Did you see somebody else in here that was the one to possibly challenge this probably heavy favorite? This was my, my thought process. We've seen a lot of horses get beat pressure. Um, Jackie's Warrior just very recently used to being out on his on his own. He took pressure. When you look at this horse, was so clear in front. That tested, right? No one's looked him in the eyes, having a meltdown. 
having a meltdown is probably one of the fastest in here as of late for juveniles. So I know how that's going to send. Well, that puts Cave Rock in a really comp as well. And then you have to try to keep up with Cave Rock or having no one clear. I just think having the Baffert, Baffert, Cave Rock's in like maybe the least favorable position. I just don't know what he's going to do in here. So he's the single on Cave Rock, but it, I do feel like he is beatable. And I, I really like agency. If someone's going to have a for horse, so I'm looking to the outside. Um, I think the more ground, the better for agency. If they view, it says he won by one. Go back and watch the race. Really thought, oh, they're going to pull this horse up. Um, he, he overcame, like, not only not breaking, Dollar. I mean, ter terrible, terrible trip. The bench and the best pal. He couldn't catch having a final stages of the race. He was making up ground on it. And having a meltdown wasn't leading off on him anymore. I think if someone's going to really appreciate the stretch out to the agency. So while Cave Rock is the likely winner, if you're going off speed figures, all that, I don't think it's impossible to beat him agency with Pratt at 12. 12 to 1 on the way Mark Glass has to use him. So for me, it is not a single. And I, I don't hate the big, big wham. We talked about Mendez earlier, how he likes to send horses places and bring them over. Wham. He, he went, he ran second in his maiden, he ran. And then he came here and he crushed his maiden race. And then he should. The horse that he beat in his maiden race, Kangaroo 14, in his next out, um, so the big wham the fact that mendez opts to run and run him in the uh the open company is very telling yeah i mean any sort of idea to get around this big favorite is obviously much appreciated and if you do you're gonna get paid within this sequence regardless i think of what your opinions are elsewhere because i feel like this is kind of that universal this is my lean for the sequence i just didn't really see a planet where i was leaving this horse off my tickets so right. It is what it is, but maybe you do two tickets. I mean, it's maybe a saver ticket mm -hmm, for sure. Um, the last race has one of the weirdest coincidences I think I've ever seen with a horse in the finale of a mandatory payout sequence, and that is the number twelve Canelo. Canelo. Canelo to the top of the stretch, leads by a length and a quarter, Golden Indy is second. Ravon is now third, Troopy and Eagle Chief are next, and they're at the top of the stretch. Canelo's still going. Canelo with an eighth of a mile to go, he's two and a half on top. Golden Indy is second, Troopy is third. Time ticking away, and Canelo trying to get the Rainbow Six pool a day early. He's going to do it. This horse last time he ran was in January, and it was at Gulfstream Park, and that was the day before a, ran a Rainbow mandatory payout for them and the pool had grown to over a million dollars and this was I think the only horse that was going to pay out the entirety of the pool and it was the day before and this horse won at like 37 to 1 or something and triggered a one million dollar plus payout for one ticket holder and he just so happens to be making his next start since then in the last leg of a mandatory payout at Del Mar I mean, this is like the weirdest thing that I've ever seen. And I can't leave this horse off of any ticket I have. He's six to one. And I also think that he has a shot to win too. I mean, the layoff, obviously a question, but this horse has some speed. He ran well, the figures fit with the rest of this group. And you have a lot of horses exiting the same race. So I'll be using a couple of my ticket in here, but this was just one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. And I could not leave this one off. That's my clue to Canelo, but I like the angle. I'm all about like that. I went with National Road in here for Mark. To be fair, you didn't beat a superstar field. He has the opposite name. He's usually in front, and then they mow me down. Um, but he won going away. From He came right back against winners. I thought he ran well. He wants some more ground. He's run really well going. National Road, for me, was the must play in there. I wasn't in love with anybody else as I was going to add it. I mean, I thought about adding uncle jeff but i i also feel like vladimir's had one win like hey vlado i picked you in like four races <laughs> you're gonna come through i'm i'm really <laughs> at ends of me national road is a for sure play uh, i just don't know who that is yet so i'm not <laughs> a secret keeper i just don't know well now it's canelo so i mean your work is done <laughs> okay now it's Can canelo and national road the, the punch play <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I just could not. That was like, I was like, I remember this name. And then I had to go back and I was like, no way is it that, you know, he he doesn't even have a race in between. It's literally just like highlighting the end of those Mandos um, or the day before. So, um, yes, National Road makes a ton of sense. He's one of the ones that come out of that same race that a lot of others do, like Quezon, Uncle Jeff, uh, Flint Stroll. A lot of those horses are exiting that same race. I wanted to use a few of them on my ticket. But that wraps up the sequence. Um Delmar for closing day. I mean, were you there to see flight line in the Pacific classic? What was that like in person? I just have to ask before we go. It was awesome uh, to watch him like get saddled and everything. And then we went upstairs. I was trying to like beat him. Um, and I, I we were standing, we were up in the director's room and we're like, and watching him and he like broke up on the outside and we're like, Ooh, ooh maybe not like the best like oh maybe not the best and then going down the backside was dragging pratt and you could see pratt was like i don't um i was like is he gonna be able to hold on at like the three eighths pool or maybe and flavian was just like you know what do your thing dude oh when they came for home everybody silent they weren't even like cheering because i think oh, you could hear like fly, 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 like being uh, people were really realizing and i love they were you know a lot of times you go down people are taking their foot watching it well enough everybody was on flight line and then like as he got they just went berserk um and and then when he, he came back like literally from the time we were cheering and chanting for him like it was like ovation for flight line and then getting to go back uh jock camp from flavian because you could hear all the noise and then when he on the backside and it just became him and flight line it's like and it was just like his breathing and he was so regular like that horse is a freak yeah i hearing everybody's um explanation of what it was like in person it just seems to be like this real true appreciation for this moment of awe in racing and i I'm looking forward to the Breeders' Cup. Um, I'm hoping that he's healthy and sound, knock on wood, that he gets there and we just see something unbelievably cool like that in the Classic. And to be able to have that moment in front of all those people at the Breeders' Cup, to have that be the finale of the Breeders' Cup for this year, um, I'm just hoping that we get to see uh, really a historic moment in the sport kind of all together at the end of this year. So I just had to ask because, uh, I mean, he's a superstar. He, he was a super. I mean, that day he was a superstar i mean I, a lot of people were already like lauding him as the best horse in the last decade and i'm like won four races and like none of them have been around down and back up and then like that performance okay you deserve like every like you deserve it the way he off and he beat fast horses and he beat good horse. thing if you're beating up on horses that like oh shouldn't be up on you know, multiple grade one winners on by 20 links. Um, you know what I mean? Yeah, truly something special. All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about this sequence with me. Um, always kind of bittersweet to have these summer meets closing down, but plenty of fall racing to look forward to and very appreciative of your expert opinion and thoughts on the sequence. So thank you so much. See you guys later.